Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is my bro, B, Joe Boric. And we are B Pal, bringing you fine baseball picks and all other sports picks daily. Um, we are crushing it pretty darn good. Yesterday, we were three and two. I uh, haven't updated on the Patreon yet, but it's that'll bring us to 19 and six in our last five days. Not bad at all. We hit like that on a regular basis there at the Patreon. People are making money hand over fist. Highly recommend you head over there. Just grab the uh, Patreon app, look up BPAL, and you will find us. Um, we have different packages there that you can choose from. I highly recommend the uh, NHL or MLB, but uh, you pick what you want. So yesterday, uh, we certainly had the uh, Toronto game down. Uh, my Jays... Yep. Terribly lost. <laughs> we had the Yankees over the Jays, uh, and uh, yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty obvious. That was one of the more obvious plays that we we uh, nail um, that are there for us. So you get those picks all the time here. Um, we did, like I said, we were three and two. I didn't have it written down which ones we hit and which ones we didn't. But oh, I think we were uh, under with the Dodgers game, and that was weird. It was like seven five or something like that. I did not expect that at all. That looked like a pretty clear under to me. And uh, but it happens. It's ball. So, anyways, we're gonna go into uh, today's action. We have again. This is how it works. We're gonna give you picks, free picks. We're gonna give you leans. And uh, there's going to be some picks that you'll find that we won't be able to give you because we have paid customers that have those picks. If you want to be one of those paid customers, you just heard exactly how we do that. Thank you, by the way, for all the subscriptions and the likes. A little light on the comments down there. Why don't you tell us what you're playing today? Give us some parlays. You know, flex your muscles. Show us how wrong we are. Well, not really, but show us how you can be. Uh, you can also hit. I want to. I'd like to get some good conversation going there about games and picks and all of those sort of things like that. So today we got a very early game. I'm thinking that this. I, I don't think this is a back-to-back -back either. So they must be heading on the road after this, right? Uh, Red Sox versus Marlins. Been a very interesting series. Um, we don't have a play on this to our Patreon, so we're probably. It looks kind of like a wash game too. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that game is Urena came back uh, later this season and hasn't really uh, figured it out um, since. And then Evaldi pitched terribly against the Yankees, then good against Baltimore, uh, and then only three innings against Tampa. But uh, so uh, he's been inconsistent. He's been the he's been a solid four or five starter this year, which is what you kind of expect of him at the, not due to his contract, but what you expect of Nathan Avaldi as a pitcher, they just paid him stupid money. So, and then Urena is only in two games. Uh, he's another guy that's more of a fourth or fifth starter. It's a battle of like two or uh, four, four or five starters. He has a career 4.62. And I mean, this is only two games. Uh, I think that game's pretty much a wash because, I mean, the over – when I looked at my app, they didn't even put it in yet. I, I, it wasn't even there. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I – like, I don't – I would say that game's pretty much just a a wash. I don't even know if it's still there now. Uh, so, no, it's not. I, don't, I still don't see the Boston and Miami game on my thing at all. So, yeah, I wouldn't even bother with that game. Right. Okay. Now I'm, I'm sort of leaning in the socks simply because Vertigo and Devers are hot right now. But whatever. I, I I'm with you on that. It could go anyway. Too much. Uh, too much. Too many question marks uh, in that game for me to pick. Put a pick on there. So we'll go Twins versus White Sox now. Yeah. Um. That game. Looks like you can definitely favor uh, the Twins because you got Maida, who is a um, much better pitcher than uh, Lopez, and that uh, where Lopez is a young, developing pitcher, he just 
hasn't figured it out and maybe he'll be a late bloomer that gets going uh next year but um yeah i i just see uh he's been a little bit better recently but uh, i mean he had a good start against kc he had a solid start and a solid start against uh detroit so it's not like those are teams that wow the hell out of you so i would say Maybe it's getting his confidence going a bit, but I would say you could probably lean the the twins in this one. Yeah, I was leaning the twins as well. Uh, again, a series that we pretty much have been avoiding uh, simply because, uh, for me anyways, it's just two teams that are so incredibly inconsistent, and that's the Diamondbacks and Angels. Uh, pitching matchup is pretty much a wash. Uh, what do you do? You see anything in those two pitchers that maybe they are? Uh, in fact, I would even go as far as say that Canning um, could get worse. Uh, what do you? What do you? What are your th- views on that? Yeah, I mean, these are two guys that are still developing. Uh, Canning's also been banged up, and I don't think the Angels have done a great job at developing pitching as a whole, even with a guy that's supposed to be good at developing pitching and Joe Madden now there. So uh, part of that's on them. I mean, they have Heaney that has a good curveball, too. Everyone thought he would be able to develop in the right system. Well, clearly it's not Los Angeles. So he might be moved after this year. Um, But I would say that young... Uh, he's another, this is a guy that's more of a, uh, probably fourth or fifth starter again, where Griffin Canning's a guy that now is pitching like a fourth or fifth starter, but is really supposed to be somewhere in your top three. Right. Um, so it, that game's almost, uh, a watch. If anything, I would almost give the D backs the lean because Canning gave up four to Houston and then three to, um, Colorado, which is still a pretty good game, but young, has looked just a tad bit better than uh, Griffin Canning. And uh, when he pitched good against San Francisco, that's when they were starting to feel themselves a bit and were doing pretty good. And he only gave up three and five and a third. Then he followed that up against Seattle, who was who has been much better than people thought. So two teams playing above what expectations were for themselves, a uh, five and a third again, and then only gave up two. And then against L.A., he also only gave up two which was the Dodgers. So uh, he, I would say he's pitched a notch better, but you're going to want to have extra money to, if you're throwing anything in that game. You're not going to want to do that if you don't have extra funds. Yeah, it's – yeah, I, I don't – like, like That's like a 1% lean. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't like – Diamondbacks. I don't, yeah. I don't like that play either because, again, Diamondbacks, their bullpen is absolutely atrocious. If exactly. they have to go in there – uh, I mean, yeah, it's very, that's a very difficult game. I don't even like the over under a lot of games like that today, actually. Um, next one though, we do have a pick, but we're not, so we can't give out the total on this one, but we can give the side, um, which is also a very difficult one to pick for a side, I would think. And that's, uh, the San Francisco giants at, uh, the Mariners. Yeah. Um, and odd at the Mariners, too, since they moved the series. So they're playing in Oracle with the Mariners as the home team. Uh, so they're playing in San Francisco, yet San Francisco ain't home. Uh, funny how that works. Um, but they had to do that, and finally Rob Manfred got something right and didn't play in above 200 air quality. Uh, so good job for doing something right. Uh, anyway, uh, Tyler Anderson, um, is a pitcher that has battled more this year. He's a guy that, um, has always been a guy that's been a battling type pitcher against Mark Avinkas, who kind of came up originally from single A last year and then had a good start and then struggled a bit. Uh, he really struggled also in his last game, which was against San Francisco. He gave up seven. So it seems like they see him pretty good, obviously. So I would lean uh, San Francisco there also because Mark Avinkis is a guy that's going to take a bit because he came up, he barely pitched in the higher levels. So he's not a pitcher that I think is going to be as bad as he looks right now. I think or actually be a quality, maybe fifth starter. 
for you, but it's just going to take a bit because he hasn't pitched in the higher levels, really. And Tyler Anderson's a veteran that's a journeyman, but a veteran that just kind of can be a fifth starter that can eat innings for you. That's why I would give the uh, notch to them uh, for the Giants to win that game by a slight margin. Yeah, and the Giants are better. They have better hitters as well. So, um, yeah, a pretty straight play, I would say. Um, it's not a bad play, but um, for some reason, the Mariners seem to. Uh, the Mariners are like there. There's a lot of spark in the Mariners. That's what I like to call. It. I think that the Mariners, in the long run, is actually are are building a pretty darn good team there, and you see that spark every once in a while, which kind of concerns me, betting against uh, the Mariners at all. Um, I, I generally look for spots for the Mariners rather than spots for the Giants uh, with their inconsistency as well, uh, simply because I like the way the team is being put together. So, But, I mean, yeah, if you're going to play it here, I, I do yeah. like the Giants as well. Right, and at the same time, because we talk about it enough in Philly because he's over there in San Francisco overachieving with a roster of quite a few journeymen on it, um, the – Giants don't have a roster that should be damn near close to 500. <laughs> they don't have a roster that should be damn near close to a playoff spot. Yeah. And again, Kapler's making a roster overperform, which is proving, I don't care if Phillies fans get pissed at this because it's true, which is proving he wasn't the problem in Middleton and Matt Glintack or the problem in Philadelphia. Yeah, never afraid to... Uh say <laughs> never afraid to uh put things out there that uh, yeah i mean it certainly appears that way that's for sure uh, i don't i think phillies are the phillies have been underperforming and uh i mean there's good reason and uh, that would be the reason probably uh rays versus the orioles i uh, wish i would have put the orioles play out there but if you would have watched our videos yesterday we had the orioles on that game on their but they had a back-to-back -back. um but uh we didn't so that's the way it is but it was a pick for you so hopefully you picked it um, what do you think of this game uh we do not have a play on the rays and orioles do we no okay so no. Uh, well, well, game, well, yeah, game one is going to be a good pitching matchup because Kremer only has pitched two games, but he's both against America's team and the Yankees, and he pitched good against them both times. So starting your career twice against one of the better teams of all time is a pretty good way to start when you pitch against them good, very good twice. And then Blake Snell's Blake Snell. I mean, everybody knows how good this guy is. Somehow last year he just had an enigma of a season that I don't think you're ever going to see again, right. that he was just off, uh, where uh, this year uh, he's back to being the Blake Snell that everybody remembers and is still even getting uh, better, and he, has, uh, and he has 50 strikeouts this year. Uh, his last game against Boston, he did really good after pitching good against the overachieving Marlins a couple starts ago, and then pitching okay against them in the following start. So um, I think this game, if you're going to lean anything, I would lean an under, depending. Uh, I didn't even, because we didn't put it in, I didn't really look at what the over and under was. seven and a half. Um, okay, then you might be better off doing an under for the first five, because seven and a half total, when you have the Orioles, some of the, they don't have a, Terrible bullpen, but they have an inconsistent bullpen. So I don't know if I would take a seven and a half under for the whole game. But for the first five, if Kremer keeps pitching like he didn't normally pitch his five and a third and gives up one or two runs, I don't think Blake Snell's going to give up more than one or, or run, if that. So uh, that's a good play potentially there. Oh yeah, we well, might as well go right over to the second game then, if you if that's all right. Yeah, uh, I that's a wash because nobody's announced. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So that was quick. Let's just go from that. Uh, yeah, if you're on our Patreon, you may see a pick on there when things are announced. We like to update as things go on. But, uh, yeah, we wash that one. Blue Jays, Yankees, my Blue Jays. Uh, interest, a little bit of an inter uh, interesting pitching matchup here. Anderson's been playing kind of over his head, but it's coming down to earth a little bit. Uh and of course, then you have Tanaka. So we do we have a? We didn't pick anything for that. We didn't play. Okay, we didn't pick anything for that. So um, no, nothing on here. No pick on this. 
I'm kind of I'm I got to keep on leaning to the Yankees the way they're playing. How about you? I agree. It would be a lean to the Yankees, and also uh, just to move on from this one quickly, I like to advertise this when I notice it. MLB TV's free game of the day is that game. So if you want to catch a free game on your computer or wherever the heck you're at at 7:05 Eastern, uh, you can download the MLB app, and that's the free game of the day. Nice. Uh, I got to go back here. You, I, I, you, you didn't go deep into that one, but there wasn't much to go into there. I mean, Tanaka versus Anderson. Uh, Cardinals Pirates, do we kind of, that, that under came in yesterday. Uh, uh, it seems that the cards, bats are sort of dried up a little bit. And uh, I mean, Pittsburgh's bats have always been. Or been dry for ages. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, possibly an under on here might not be a bad play. Yeah, you an under again. I would also lean the Cardinals just because Dakota Hudson's been so good uh, this yeah. year. Um, he's really coming into his own this season. Um, and uh, you knew he was supposed to be a good pitcher. The guy was picked, uh, I think he was picked in the competitive balance first round. But he was picked uh, in technically the first round, the 34th pick. Um, and uh, he's showing that he's first round talent now. Uh, he was pitching solid in past years, giving you signs of being what he is now. But now he really fully, in what is usually around your first start of your prime years, age of 25, started hitting it and hitting it big time. So I would definitely lean the Cardinals there. Yeah, definitely not getting much juice. Might be a, a not might not be a bad, uh, but I do like the under there. I, yeah, I I yeah. might even you know what you might even be getting a paid pick there because we did i didn't notice that before so uh possibly uh mets versus phillies what a series this has been my gosh uh what um tough these two teams are tough to bet i find this year how about you yeah um the well the mets are a team that goes on a run and then goes on a skidding. And it's also due to the fact that Ahmed Rosario, who was once your starting shortstop is now just a Met. And then, and probably going to be traded after this year. Cause I guess he just doesn't fit in with your life. I still like him as a player, but I guess you don't think he fits in with your system, whatever have you, he doesn't play a lot anymore. Um, and then Pete Alonzo's having a sophomore slump. If, those guys played like they expected. The Mets would probably be where the Phillies are at, and the Phillies would be where the Mets are at. Because they do have a better overall team. And the where, And especially bullpen. Granted, some of the worst teams in baseball have a better bullpen, like the Royals, for example, than the yeah. Phillies do. Um, so that's why it's hard to bet on the Phillies because their bullpen is abysmal. For the Mets, it's hard to bet on them because guys that are supposed to be good are having bad slumps this year. Where guys you expect to be good like Michael Conforto and Jeff McNeil and all those guys are still doing good and uh, J.D. Davis. But other guys that are supposed to be like Alonzo, one of the carrying weights of your team is really struggling. And Rosario, who you thought would keep developing to become that shortstop or second baseman if you slid him over for you, is not happening. So it's just they've been – and also pitching you picked up is not doing as good as you hope. Rick Purcell pitches great against the Phillies. Against about everyone else, he doesn't pitch too good anymore. So, yeah, that's why uh, that game's kind of a wash. I won't even tell. Like, the yeah, game. there's too many question marks on that game. Uh, I don't know. Tell us in the comment section if we say if we if we have washes or something. Like, give us a something in the comment section that uh, maybe you think differently and the reasons why. We like to learn together. Uh, I grow as a capper by listening to other people. Um, for instance, with Joe here, I've grown as a ball capper exponentially, amazingly. Uh, so yeah, let us know down there. We we uh, we res- we uh, definitely value your uh, insight as well. Um, okay, next game we have a play on, but uh, um, I'm thinking that there could be a possible over here, maybe. Except that you know Bieber's pitching, so. Really, they're going to have to crush the Tigers, but the Tigers have been getting crushed. So, uh, what would you say on a total here? Um, I would stay away from it because the only way you're getting the total is if Mize gives up like 
seven runs himself uh, or five, and then their bullpen gives up the rest because Bieber normally pitches deep into games and is definitely one of your uh, Cy Young, if not probably winner, uh, AL Cy Young top contenders. So I wouldn't really try to bet an over when he's in a game. He's basically like how when you say Cole's in a game or for that matter, going back a bit, Roy Holiday, um, Maddox, any of those guys. At this point, he's basically, you probably don't want to look at the game thinking there's going to be a lot of scoring today. Maybe on one side, but that's a tough risk to take. That's the thing. It's probably going to be pretty one-sided. There's a lot of plays we can do there, but we have one uh, that we really like for our Yeah, the other thing you have to be careful about is Casey Mize is a very good prospect. He just hasn't figured it out yet. I mean, the dude was the first overall pick in 2018. Uh, He came up after two years, uh, well, really only a year of being in the minors, about a year and a half. Uh, So, and who knows, I think he's a guy that probably, if this was a regular year, would be sent back down to fine tune. But because you don't have a minors and you have that camp, which doesn't really replicate actual gameplay very well, they try to their best, but it doesn't. Um... I think that's the reason he's still up, too. They want him to figure it out in the majors because sending him down to the uh, taxi squad camp, he only played three inning games. So other, I think uh, he would be a guy, too, that would probably be fine-tuning it in the minors, but since you don't have that option, he can't do that. So eventually he's probably going to start performing like the caliber player he is. So it's it's a risk, too, to even put an over in when you have a guy that's a former first overall pick. Yeah. And actually, now that you mentioned it that way, maybe even the under might be a better play. Um, but uh, yeah, it's that's a tough that's a tough play. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go with uh, let's go Houston. Uh, Houston and the Rangers. Interesting thing here is that uh, Valdez has struggled against the Rangers quite a bit. Um, Houston is. Uh, I, I said before the season start, Houston was going to struggle this year with all that shame on them. <laughs> and uh, I think we're all happy about that anyway. I mean, struggle compared to what that roster should probably be doing if they didn't go through all the shit that they did before. Uh, then, of course, the Rangers are just simply struggling this year. So what do we have as a – do you have any leans on this one, Joe? Um. Valdez gave up eight in against the Angels. He still pitched seven innings, but he gave up eight runs. And then he uh, gave up uh, five against the Dodgers. Uh, the, his last start is his first time. He looked pretty good against the Rangers. But um, coming off of those two starts, if you're going to lean anything, you're probably better leaning an over in this game. In terms of a winner, logically speaking, you're better off leaning to Houston. But, I mean... Houston hasn't been very logical this year. Uh, So I would just kind of stay away from that. Yeah, I like the over two. Um, For some reason, I just just call this a feeling. I just have a feeling that uh, the Rangers may take this one tonight. So take that for whatever you wish. But uh, I'm not sure I'm going to put any money on it. But maybe you'll want to. Finally, I think we're on our finally here. Yeah, yeah uh, Dodgers it's, a, and it's a Dodgers game, right? Finally, yeah, Dodgers, Dodgers Rockies. versus Rockies. We got a play on this one, uh, so we have a play on the total. So let's go uh, on the uh, side for Dodgers and Rockies. Uh, I, I got. I think that the Dodgers are going to start playing even better and better as the season goes on. So, uh, what do you what do you think on this one? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Urias gave up four when he faced the Rockies a couple weeks ago in only about four innings. Uh, So if he does that, then I would definitely say Colorado's probably going to win because Kyle Freeland has gone back to – he was very good in his a couple years ago, very off last year, and then – very on again this year. So I think that was just, again, young pitchers always have a blimp in the road usually, unless if you're like Steven Strasburg or somebody like that, or Clayton Kershaw, obviously. So the 
that's uh i think he's back to his normal self he's uh pitching really well this is a battle of two very good exciting lefties uh you have urias against freeland um this is one that i'm sure the rockies have to be the underdog i would almost put this game because of the pitching matchup at a 50 50 so if you want to put money on it i would almost just say throw it on the rockies if you have extra money you don't have yeah. extra money, don't play with that game. If you have extra money, throw it on the Rockies. Right. Um, that, and we've said that a lot. If you're looking at a betting for a long-term investment, which we kind of go with that on our Patreon, we look at long-term investments quite a bit. We're up significantly over the years, I would, or well, over last, compared last year to this year, somewhere around 130 units. So um, we look at the long-term investments. If you're looking at a long-term investment, when you see a wash like this or feel it's a wash, uh, you did your uh, due diligence and come up yeah. with some wash Also, games. you can't have pitchers that are much closer in stats. 3.53 ERA, 3.54 ERA. Yeah. <laughs> 0.01 difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I'd probably lean the Dodgers here, but not high enough that I would bet the game, especially with the juice. So... Um, betting on the Rockies here is really a really, really good play. Uh, keep your bets low. I recommend you keep a tabulation of your bets with these types of games because you will see in the long run, you'll be up a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit over time. Well, that's our ball picks for today. We got to do another video here. We got to have a hockey pick. We're going to have a football pick. Uh, so be watching out for that. Thanks for coming in and enjoying this fine programming that we do daily. Um, thanks you for your subscriptions. Also, steelflyers.com. That is going to be one exciting website. I just got my password and stuff for my page that I'm going to be doing on that. Uh, you're going to have every team and every sport down the road with writers for each team and podcasters for each team and a live going through the whole broadcasting. It is going to be absolutely fantastic. Be waiting for it. We'll be sending you sending it out to you information out to you as it progresses for joe boric i am oh you can also find our information on there too you can go there now and you can find all our information joe does a whole lot of writing flyers nitty gritty he's also a, a hockey guy uh i'm a hockey guy you can find my uh all my information on there as well have a great day everyone lots of love to you